This presentation is about Cisco AnyConnect client security. We will focus on the client implementation. Gerhard has spent a lot of time analyzing the Linux client and found various privilege escalation vulnerabilities. In parallel, Matthias analyzed the iOS client, which has a fundamentally different design. Since both of them finished their master thesis, which I supervised, I am presenting on their behalf. When talking about VPNs, the most popular setup won't provide any security at all. Third-party setups only hide network activity from internet service providers, but the third party would still see all the traffic. Moreover, this third party indirectly gets network access to their customers' devices. Nonetheless, they are very popular because they can bypass local restrictions. For example, ExpressVPN works in China and is required to access services like Twitter. ExpressVPN was just sold for almost 1 billion US dollars. This does not reflect the worth of existing customer contracts, but also data exposed to ExpressVPN. Of course, as an academic researcher, we never download something illegal on the internet. We don't have to hide our Sci-Hub downloads because our university purchased access to articles. But when working from home, one has to connect to the university's VPN, and quite often this requires users installing a proprietary VPN client. The most common client here is Cisco AnyConnect because Cisco has the largest network market share. A similar setup but yet completely different use case are company networks with device management and special services. In this setup, users do not control their end devices, but they are administered by the company. The company has the permission to execute code on these systems and users often don't have administered permissions. VPN usage might even be mandatory. Even though this talk is mainly about the iOS vulnerabilities, I will summarize the Linux findings. The Linux AnyConnect client has very dangerous design primitives. First of all, the VPN server is allowed to execute scripts on the client. This is reasonable in some corporate setups, but not in most use cases. Moreover, the VPN client interface can be controlled as normal user, but interacts with a daemon that runs as root. This is required on Linux to configure network interfaces. Gabbard identified various privilege escalations on Linux. Interestingly, some of these are similar to other bugs reported on Windows before, even though slightly differing in implementation details. Apparently, Cisco did not fix reported issues systematically across all clients. And now let's take a detailed look into the iOS implementation. Most features provided by the AnyConnect desktop clients are not present on iOS. This is because iOS only allows implementing VPN clients by using the network extension framework. For example, updates need to be installed through the iOS App Store and cannot be downloaded via the AnyConnect app. Thus, attack vectors on the update, download and installation process do not apply, such as downgrades or overwriting the provided binary with arbitrary software. Another attack vector was the execution of scripts provided by the server. iOS does not allow script executions by apps. Nonetheless, Matthias found various interesting bugs in the iOS implementation. iOS network extensions contain providers and features for all kinds of network-related operations, such as content filtering, DNS, and Wi-Fi. VPN-specific extensions only allow three types of VPNs personal VPNs, packet tunnel providers, and app proxy providers. Since AnyConnect doesn't support the VPN protocols within iOS, they have to implement their own packet-oriented VPN protocol with a packet tunnel provider. iOS applications are packed in a zip-like format containing all executables and assets like images, configurations, files, and more. The main executable is called AnyConnect, and the network extension is implemented in the AC extension binary. In addition to those, there are several other app extensions for iOS sharing and Siri functionality. To further analyze what happens inside the AnyConnect client, we can enable debug logs. In addition to the switches shown in the app, AnyConnect has further internal options. On a jailbroken device, it is possible to edit the debug log config JSON file. With debugging enabled, we can observe actions on the AnyConnect network extensions, 
called AC extension in the service tab. The AC extension only implements the Cisco specific parts of the VPN protocol. In addition, several daemons on iOS are involved into setting up and maintaining VPN connections, and the most important ones are listed here. PKD is the plugin kit daemon, an e session manager, the network extension session manager, and an e agent, the network extension agent. PKD and any session manager run as root, while an e-agent runs as mobile user. All of them communicate through XPC messages to exchange data. Once the tunnel is created, apps can communicate through a newly created tunnel interface. But how do the packets flow between the tunnel interface and the network extension? After the tunnel is established, a new interface is available. This is used for bidirectional communication with the VPN server. Outgoing packets are encapsulated by the EIC extension and sent to the VPN server. The server decapsulates the packets and sends them to the appropriate destination. Similarly, incoming packets are encapsulated by the VPN server and sent to the client. The client decapsulates the packets and writes them to the tunnel interface. And now to the first attack surface, which is XML parsing. Most settings are exchanged in an XML format. Thus, if there was an issue in XML parsing, the VPN server would be able to get code execution on the client. This attack surface is relevant on iOS, since the server cannot execute scripts. The parsing logic is implemented inside the network extension AC extension. As the class name CVC sucks parser indicates, AC extension implements a sucks based XML parser, which, in contrast to a DOM parser, does not need to fully read XML documents at once. The actual parsing is performed by the libxml iOS shared library. So, fuzzing did not find any XML related bugs in AnyConnect. This has a good reason because the iOS library seems to be well tested and it's nothing Cisco specific in here. The next attack surface is the URL handler. AnyConnect can be controlled by URLs. These URLs allow instrumenting most of the AnyConnect client functionality such that we can automatically test it. In the example listed here, connection establishment for a VPN profile identified by the string university will be triggered. This is a minimal example. New connections can be created with many more parameters. Here you can see a couple of URL calls. Using Frida, we can automate testing of URLs. Fast cases included creating thousands of VPN connection entries and deleting them. Moreover, using different character encodings, emojis, etc. all works without problems. However, setting a very long description or name for the VPN connection breaks network connectivity within iOS, even across reboots. In this demo, you can see how we click a URL in Safari with a very long name, which in turn opens Cisco AnyConnect. The name is applied to the settings. Now, the settings app becomes very unresponsive. This is not a video rendering artifact. Also, the VPN view does not load properly. Moreover, Wi-Fi immediately disconnects in the drop-down menu and is also disconnected in the settings.
Now to the last attack surface, packet loss. This was the first bug I discovered. When I went to the laundry room with bad internet connectivity and with AnyConnect enabled, I got very weird crashes. Matthias tried reproducing this with microwaves, tinfoil and more. However, Matthias still got a decent HSDPA signal. The issue here is the attached USB cable required for Frida and debugging. Once the USB cable is unplugged, internet connectivity is dropped. However, the older crashes by me could not be reproduced. Another way of interrupting the internet connection more controlled is to either use iOS command line tools or controlling a Wi-Fi access point. Interestingly, a C extension crashes very fast using this approach. These crashes are caused by a double free at different memory locations. Further debugging reveals that they are associated with a settings dictionary. As you can see here, there are no previous crashes on this device. Now the internet connection drops when establishing a new VPN connection. Since this is a double free based vulnerability, the access address often is just hex 20. The crashed thread indicates that the double free structure is an NS dictionary. Further details on how to trace which dictionary exactly is affected are included in the paper. And with this, let me conclude this talk. Corporate VPNs definitely serve some purpose, such as protecting against data interception and protecting service access. However, from a user perspective, VPN usage can increase the attack surface for remote code execution. iOS network extensions reduce the risk of security issues by design and too many privileges within VPN clients. However, it seems that network extensions on iOS are not well tested. With this, I'm handing over to the Q&A. Feel free to ask questions. And thanks for watching.